My name is Sheila, and I guess you could say I'm living the suburban dream. I've been married to my wonderful husband, Chris, for four years now, and boy, what a ride it's been. We met in college, both majoring in business. There was something about his smile and his easygoing nature that drew me in. We were inseparable from the start, spending late nights studying, giggling over inside jokes, and planning our future together. Fast forward a few years, and we got married, promising to be there for each other through thick and thin, the whole for better or for worse thing seemed like a piece of cake at the time. But little did I know that our journey was about to take a turn, with me being almost dead, thanks to none other than my mother-in-law. Chris and his mom, Martha, had this type of bond which was just too much, in my book. Martha practically raised him solo after her divorce, and it seemed like she was dead set on keeping him under her wing after he had flown the nest. I heard tales about how she used to match outfits with him, and she'd always be there like a shadow while he used to play with his friends. Let me tell you about Martha's timetable for Chris. It was like she was the master architect of his life or something. She'd have this whole elaborate schedule mapped out for him from the moment he woke up to the moment he went to bed, even when he headed off to college. The clinginess didn't exactly fade. She'd call him multiple times a day, checking on his schedule, and even popping in for visits twice a week. Honestly, it left its mark on Chris. He was this amazing guy, but you could tell he carried the weight of all that on his shoulders. He doubted himself a lot, always wondering if he was doing the right thing or if he was living up to her expectations. She had this tendency to get a bit jealous of Chris's girlfriends, which was a bit on the weird side. I remember when Chris introduced me to her for the first time at dinner. I could practically feel her eyes scanning me from head to toe, assessing every detail. Sheila, it is so lovely to finally meet you. Chris talks about you all the time, said Martha. Thank you, Martha. It's great to meet you too. Oh, I'm sure it is. Chris has a way of. Well, surprising us with his choices, she replied. Yeah, he's full of surprises. So Sheila, tell me, what do you do for a living? I work in marketing. It's pretty exciting, there's always something new happening. Check this, Sheila. Chris used to date some characters like Lily, this artsy chick, always lost in her own artsy universe, not exactly the practical type. Please mom, you're embarrassing me, Chris would interject. Seriously. Oh, totally. And then there was this musical wonder, talented but maybe a bit too free-spirited for my taste. You know Sheila, no matter who comes into Chris's life, I'll always be the first woman he loves. Come on, mom. You got it, mother-son bond, you know? Yep, gotcha. Even when I tried to have a conversation with her, it felt like I was navigating a minefield. I'd mention a movie I liked, and she'd actually mention that Chris didn't enjoy that genre much. I'd talk about a place that I wanted to visit, and she'd drop in and say that Chris had already been there with her. It's like she had this mission to prove she was the ultimate Chris expert, and I was just an amateur. She just came off as so insecure to me, from the very first time we met. She had an opinion about everything, from how I should decorate our apartment to what I should cook for dinner, as per Chris's preferences. It felt like I was competing for Chris's attention with his own mother. Things took an even wilder turn when Martha's kitchen caught fire, turning the house into a disaster zone. She needed a place to stay during the renovations, and of course, we had to invite her. The day Martha arrived, she handed me a 14-page rule book. Yes, you heard that right, a freaking rule book. Hey Martha, I'm sorry about the fire at your place, man, that must have been tough. You're welcome to stay here as long as you need. Let me grab those bags for you. Thanks, Sheila. The fire was a nightmare, shook things up, but before we all get settled, there's something I want to give you. Oh, alright, check this out. It's my little creation, a guide to keeping peace around the house. A guide, okay, that's interesting. You got it, 
It's just my way of keeping things on track while I'm in the picture. Well, what is with all these rules? You know, I've always believed in having some ground rules in a house. Back in the day, I had to keep things in check while handling Chris. We don't need a rule book to function as adults, do we? Oh, Sheila, I get it, but having a few ground rules can prevent unnecessary drama, you know, and breaking them might have some consequences. Consequences? Are we running a boot camp here? Stop complaining, now let's tackle those bags. I'm curious to see where you've tucked me in. Once I showed Martha her room and got back to mine, I flipped through the pages, each one outlining absurd rules like vacuum the living room precisely at 8.30 a.m., serve dinner at 6.45 p.m., shop, and my personal favorite, wash the bathroom tiles with lemon-scented cleaner every other day. I was shocked at the list of rules. What kind of controlling behavior was this? When Chris got back from work, I showed him the rule book. Before going to bed, we both started laughing at it. It was like we stepped into this whole other universe where everything was super organized. Okay, this one takes the cake, arrange the spice jars in alphabetical order. Yes, I guess our spices are going for a degree in linguistics. And do not miss the Gourmet Tuesdays, where I apparently have to whip up a five-course meal from scratch. Well, that is one way to turn our humble kitchen into a Michelin star restaurant. You know, honey, my mom means well, but she needs to realize that I have grown up now. This is our house, not hers. We have our own way of doing things. You're right, so promise me you will not take this rule book too seriously. It's just her way of showing that she cares, even if it's a bit eccentric. Deal, no alphabetized spices or gourmet extravaganzas in our future, I promise. The next morning I woke up, and Chris was already ready for work. He kissed me goodbye. Martha's rule book was sitting on my bedside table. I checked the time, around 8 a.m., and realized that according to the rule book, I should be getting ready to vacuum the living room by 8.30 a.m. Yeah, right, I thought. I took a shower, got dressed, grabbed a granola bar, and left for work before Martha could catch me. I walked in after a tough day at the office, hoping to relax on the couch, but as soon as I stepped through the door, it was like walking into a storm. Chris and Martha were locked in this intense argument in the living room. Martha was all worked up. Chris, I'm really struggling to understand why Sheila can't seem to respect the rules I've set in this house. Did you notice that Sheila just left for work this morning without doing any of the chores? Mom, we've talked about this. This house is turning into chaos. It's about maintaining order, that's how I raised you. Raised him with rules that he's now grown out of. Look who is here, you think you know him better, huh? Because I distinctly remember him asking for pancakes every Sunday morning when he was a kid. Mom, seriously. Sheila, who even are you? This is my son's house, and it belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. Excuse me, what? Chris, Mom, I need to come clean. This is Sheila's house. She owns it. What? How is that possible? Martha, when Chris and I got married, my parents gifted me this house as a first anniversary present to under my name. Chris, you never told your mom? I didn't want to complicate things, so I let you believe it was mine. I'm sorry, Mom. So after Chris did his dramatic storm off, I was left standing there, totally dumbfounded by what he just thrown into the conversation. My brain was doing some serious acrobatics trying to figure out why he'd go all Mission Impossible with a lie about our house. Chris had never, not once, lied to me before. He'd always been the sweetest, most genuine guy. I took a deep breath and headed to our bedroom, giving the door a gentle push. There he was. Chris, looking like he was drowning in guilt. Hey, can we talk? Yeah, I guess we should. Look, I'm not mad or anything, I just... I can't wrap my head around why you would lie about the house of all things. You know we have always been open and honest with each other. I know, honey, 
That's what's been eating me. I should have just told you the truth from the start. Okay, so what's the deal? It's my mom, she has always been on my case, you know, ever since I was a kid. She's had these expectations about who I should be and what I should achieve. It's like she wanted this perfect version of me. And you thought lying about the house would, what, impress her? No, not impress, more like disappoint her. She's always been proud of her control over things, and I thought if she found out that you're the one who actually owns the house, it would shake things up. She would be disappointed in me for not being the son she wants me to be. Wait, hold on, Chris. You are your own person. You have always been kind, hardworking, and true to yourself. Baby, you are the man I fell in love with. Why does she need to define your worth? Chris's backstory with his toxic mother was hitting me hard. Growing up with that kind of negativity made him feel like he had to lie to his own mom. The whole thing was straight up unfair. Chris, the most chill and caring guy I knew, carried around this heavy baggage from his messed up family. He deserved better, a childhood that didn't leave him feeling like he had to lie or prove himself. What really irked me was how toxic Martha could be. It made sense why she had no friends and nowhere to go when her kitchen burned down. I was mad. She was so mad that she had this hold over Chris that she made him feel like he had to lie to keep the peace. I was mad that she was this toxic presence in our lives. It was like she was poisoning everything. The next day was seriously weird. I was getting ready for work fully prepared for Martha to come at me with her usual chore checklist or some sarcastic comment like she always did, but, surprise surprise, she was radio silent. I headed to work, feeling a mix of relief and suspicion, thinking, is this the calm before the storm, or what? As soon as I stepped through our front door after work, I saw that my living room was a total mess. Furniture was moved around, and vases and plant pots from my beloved indoor garden were nowhere to be seen. Martha, what have you done? She emerged from around the corner. Oh, Sheila, I just thought the room needed a bit of a change. Change, Martha? This is our home, you can't just come in and rearrange everything without even asking. Well, I thought it would be better this way, and those plants were taking up too much space. You know what, Martha? I'm just tired, tired of your constant need to control everything. I invited you into my home, gave you a space here, and what do you do? You find new ways to make my life miserable. Oh, please, Sheila, spare me the drama. You are overreacting. They were just plants. Stepping into my bedroom was a bit of a shocker. My bed was against a new wall, the photo frames on the dresser seemed cramped, and my desk was in a spot that made zero sense. I couldn't really grasp why Martha thought she had the right to be a feng shui master. Can we just live together without one of us trying to rearrange the whole universe? I stormed into Martha's room, my frustration reaching its boiling point. Enough was enough, Martha, seriously, what were you thinking? You had no right to go into my bedroom and rearrange things without asking. You're blowing this way out of proportion, Sheila. We need to talk. I've been trying to keep my cool, but I can't hold back anymore. You've been treating me like some sort of intruder in my own home, and it's not okay. I get that you have your rules and your idea of how things should be, but let me tell you something. Being a mom doesn't give you a free pass to mess with our lives. Whoa, where's all this coming from? It's been building up, after months of your critiques and eye rolls. You think you're the guru of life or something, especially when it comes to Chris, but guess what, your way isn't the only way. Believe it or not, I've been guiding him since his dad left, and I give you props for that, but that doesn't mean you're the boss of our lives. I've seen how your need for control is stressing Chris out. Walking around like he's got a ton of bricks on his shoulders, worried that he's not living up to your expectations. I'm seeing it for what it is. I see it when Chris hesitates to speak his mind around you. I hear it when he tries to keep you happy at all costs. Chris is a grown man, and I'm not letting you yank his strings anymore. 
You just brought trouble upon yourself, Sheila, questioning me as a parent. You'll know soon. So after that showdown with Martha, I was emotionally drained and seriously wiped out. I told the whole drama to Chris later that night and found comfort in his arms. He was like my shield against the emotional storm. He apologized to me and told me that Martha was not a permanent member of the house and that she would be gone soon. Chris, is she'll be gone soon, comments started making sense, so I did not let it bother me much, but the next morning, while I was getting ready for work, Martha just walked up and apologized out of the blue. She said she tried to relax and not meddle. Surprisingly, she stuck to it. Things were going pretty smoothly for a while. Martha seemed to be on a mission to be helpful, pitching in with chores, and being all nice and cooperative. She even made dinner for Chris and me, and we actually sat down like a normal family to eat. It was super weird, but kind of nice, to be honest. For a moment, Chris and I started thinking maybe she is turning a corner. After that, in the span of around a week, everything took an unexpected turn. I came home one day after work, and Martha greeted me. She asked me how my day was and handed over some homemade protein bars. It seemed like a nice gesture at first, so I took one and had a bite, so I ended up gobbling down the entire thing. But within moments, I could feel a weird lump forming in my throat and my skin erupted in rashes. Panic set in. Did Martha slip in some peanuts? I called out for her. You know I'm allergic to peanuts, what the heck did you put in those bars? Oh my gosh, Sheila, I forgot about your allergy. I didn't mean to, I swear, Martha replied. Seriously, Martha? Oh, come on, Sheila, it must have slipped my mind, just like my rules slipped yours. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I could die. I rushed to my room to get my EpiPen, and Martha followed. Why did I put that five pin? I need it now, looking for something, Sheila? My EpiPen, you rearranged this room, where did you keep it? This is not a game, Martha. My EpiPen is a matter of life and death. Well, we'll just have to find it, won't we? I could feel my body giving out, like I was running on fumes. My vision was all wonky, and the sense of doom settled in. I knew things were seriously messed up as I was trying not to black out. I heard Chris's voice cutting through the haze, he was on the phone, talking like his life depended on it. An ambulance pulled up, paramedics were all business, doing their thing to get me stable. The ride to the hospital was blurry as heck, with sirens beeping and the whole shebang. It felt like I was drifting in and out of some weird dream, and then I finally rested my eyes. When I woke up in the hospital, Chris was there, looking worn out but relieved. I was done, done with her manipulation, her toxicity, and her complete disregard for anyone's well-being but her own. As soon as I was discharged, I had a serious heart-to-heart -heart with Chris. He knew it was time to take a stand too. He'd seen firsthand the damage his mother's actions could cause, and he was ready to set things right. In a couple of days, I was discharged from the hospital, and Chris and I got home. Mom, we need to talk. I don't know what Sheila told you, but it was all a mistake. Cut it out, you know what, Mom? I used to think I had a mother, someone who cared, someone who wanted the best for her family, but I was dead wrong. I didn't know I had a monster for a mom, someone who's willing to manipulate just to satisfy her own twisted need for control. No, honey, I need to get this out. Mom, you've torn this family apart with your toxic behavior. You've taken every opportunity to belittle and demean Sheila, someone who's done nothing but support and care for all of us. What did she get in return? Neglect, and allergies triggered because you forgot. It's sickening. You nearly killed Sheila. Let that sink in. You almost killed your son's wife. Didn't you even think about me once? Chris, please, I never meant for things to go this far. I know I've made mistakes, and I'm so sorry for what happened to Sheila. Mom, listen carefully, you have two choices. 
You can leave on your own terms, or I'll make sure you're out of here. You can spend your days in whatever hole you want until your house is renovated. I don't care if you stay in a motel or wherever, but you won't do it here. This is where it ends, Mom. Our relationship, whatever was left of it, ends right here. I don't have a mother anymore, not in the way that matters. Honestly, I couldn't help but feel a kind of twisted satisfaction when Chris showed his mom the door. She loved him so much that it must have stung like crazy to be rejected by her own son. She honestly deserved it after the protein bar situation. We've lost touch with Martha completely, no calls, no texts, no sign of where she went. It's like she vanished into thin air, and as much as I hope for her to grow and find her way, I can't help but wonder where she ended up. Despite all the drama, she still has mom, and that worry for her is there. Chris ran into a couple of construction guys working on her house, and they let him know that she drops in sometimes to see if things are in check, so I guess she is okay. Our home is no longer a battleground, and who knows if we will get in touch with her again. We are just trying to live in the moment. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.